In this video, we will apply the two formulas we learned previously to find the sample variance for a specific data set and then find the sample standard deviation. I have written the two formulas here uh, to make it easier for us to follow. Okay. Now, the data set has five observations right, of a variable called uh, winds. Now whenever I calculate the uh, variance and the standard deviation, I like to construct a table like this to help me keep track of my calculation. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, right? So if you prefer to just plug numbers into one of the two formulas, that's fine with me. Uh, just make sure that you show me all your work. So I will show you now how to fill out this table and how the table gives us what we need to find the variance using either of the formulas. Okay. Let's start by uh, labeling these columns. So we have column 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now column 2 basically gives us the uh, the values of the five observations in the data set so we have the first observation being 10 the second observation is 9 the third observation is 8 and so on and so forth in column 3 you want to uh, fill it with uh, the mean of the, of the data set right? so if you look at both formulas up here you need the mean to calculate the sample variance. Okay. So at this point, you should know how to calculate the mean. Right. For so for in this case, the mean x bar is going to be equal to ten plus nine plus eight plus twelve plus twelve divided by the number of observations which is 5 that gives you 10.2 so I'm gonna have 10.2 uh, as the mean note that for any given sample there's one and only one mean so the mean is gonna be the same for all the observations Now in column 4, we have uh, is the column for x, xi square. Okay. So in this column, we want to square the observations. So for the first observation, it's going to be x1 square, which is 10 square, which gives you 100. For the second observation, it's going to be x2 square, which is 9 square, that gives you 81. For the third observation, you have x3 square. For the fourth observation, it's x4 square. And then for the last observation, is x5 square. Now, in column number 5, you want to find the deviation about the mean for each of the observations. So, this is basically the quantity xi minus x bar. Basically, you want to subtract the mean from each of the observations. So for the first observation is x1 minus x bar, which is 10 minus 10.2. That gives you a negative 0.2. For the second observation is x2 minus x bar, which is equal to 9 minus 10.2. That gives you a negative 1.2. For the third observation, you're going to have x3 minus x bar. For the fourth observation, is x4 minus x bar. And then for the last observation, is x5 minus x bar. Now finally, in the last column of the table, you want to square whatever you get, you get in column 5. So squaring the first term gives you x1 minus x bar all square which is equal to negative 0.2 all square 
So negative 0.2 times negative 0.2 gets you 0.04. For the second observation, it's going to be x2 minus x bar all square, which is equal to negative 1.2 all square. That gives you 1 point is you 1.44 so for the third observation you're gonna have x3 minus x bar all square for the fourth observation is x4 minus x bar all square and then for the last observation is x5 minus x bar all square okay so, so let's look at uh, the last column, once you have filled out this whole table, look at the last column. The individual numbers in the last column are x1 minus x bar all square, x2 minus x bar all square, x3 minus x bar all square, x4 minus x bar all square, and then x5 minus x bar all square. So if you sum up all the numbers in the last column, you get the summation for xi minus x bar all square for i going from 1 to n. In this case, n is equal to 5. In other words, you're going to get x1 minus x bar all square plus x2 minus x bar all square plus x3 minus x bar all square plus x4 minus x bar all square plus x5 minus x bar all square but what but what is this sum this sum is if you look at the first formula up here that sum is the numerator So this is going to be the numerator of formula 1. So if you add up all the numbers in column number 6 in your last column and then divide it by 5 minus 1, you get the variance. So that's one way that the table gives us the uh, information we need to calculate the variance. Let's now look at the column number four, which is the column labeled xi square. The individual terms in this column are x1 square, x2 square, x3 square, x4 square, and x5 square. So if you sum up all these numbers, you get the summation of xi square for i going from 1 to n in this case n is equal to 5 right so that gives you x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square plus x4 square plus x5 square now let's look at uh, the second formula up here that sum is precisely the first five terms of the second formula. So if you have that sum, you know what the mean is. The, in order to calculate the uh, sample variance, you just need to punch this into a calculator. Okay. At this point, you should pause the video, take some time to um, fill out the table, and make sure you understand the, uh, how the table gives us what we need to find the sample variance. So, after filling out the table, you should have uh, something that looks like this. So the summation of xi square for i going from 1 to n, in this case 5, is going to be equal to 533, and then the summation of all the numbers in the uh, the last column 
is 12.8. So if you uh, apply the first formula, then you, you take 12.8 divided by n minus 1, which is 4, that gives you 3.2. Alternative, alternatively, if you use the second formula, you're going to take 533 minus 5 times the mean square divided by 4, that gives you 3.2 as well. So it doesn't matter which formula you use, you should get the same answer for the um, sample variance. Now in order to find the sample standard deviation, which is S, you the only thing you need to do is to take the square root of the sample variance, which is a square root of 3.2 that should give you 1.7889. So that's how we um, calculate the um, sample variance and the sample standard deviation. This is a very important thing for this course, so make sure you can do this kind of problem. If you want more practice, feel free to look at the slides. I have another example in there, and then look at the, uh, the problem set.